Okay, g'day all and welcome to another video. So this is going to be a fun one. What we're going to do here is learn all about sorting algorithms. So this is the Sorting Olympics. We have ourselves seven competitors or sorting algorithms and we're going to race them in three different races to find out which is the fastest, the king of all sorting algorithms. <laughs> okay, so I'm not going to say which color belongs to which competitor until after all of the races are done. But um, I think part of the fun is trying to guess which of the sorting algorithms belongs to which color. So when you see the races, it's going to be a bunch of little colored dots running around on a track. But um, each of the colored dots corresponds to one of these sorting algorithms. So the competitors in a random order are selection sort, the quick sort, insertion sort, the bubble sort, the radix sort, the shell sort, and uh, STLs, STD sort. That's just your standard uh, vector sort in C++. Okay, and the events are the 100 meters or the dash, which is uh, sorting arrays from two to 11 elements. Then we've got the one kilometer or the middle sized race, which is sorting arrays from 60 elements up to 250 elements. And the final one is the marathon where the sorting algorithms had to sort lists of 100,000 all the way up to 200,000 elements. Uh, after we've watched the first couple of races, say the 100 meter and then the one kilometers, it might be interesting for you to try and guess which color belongs to which algorithm. Okay, so this is the way that the events work. We've got um, the competitors all sort identical lists and uh, they were unsigned integers and they were generated by an X or shift generator. And each of the corners of the track actually corresponds to the duration that it took the particular sorting algorithm to sort a list. Yeah, so the corners actually increase in size as the races go on, and then by the final race, they're sorting 200,000 elements. Okay, so just as a little example here, I've got illustrated the very first race, which we'll see in just a minute, just so that everybody knows how this works. The competitors all start here at the start line. So the time it takes the competitor to reach this first corner just here is the time that it took that competitor to sort a two element list. And then by the time they reach the next corner, they've sorted a three element list and then a four element list, a five element list, yada, 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 all the way up to an 11 element list. So by the time the competitors have actually reached the end, they've sorted a whole bunch of lists. But what we've got is uh, a good way to test uh, how the sorting algorithms perform as the size of the data increases. All right, here is our very first race, the small race. This is actually my uh, uncle's LAN card that I took out of his broken computer because it was broken. <laughs> but you don't have to know that. So, so each of the colored dots corresponds to some particular sorting algorithm. Um, place your bets. The initial race will just be random. I mean, nobody has any way of knowing which color dot stands for which sorting algorithm. But anyway, <laughs> all right, on your marks, get set and go. Okay, so we can see yellow's taking an early lead, purple behind, but blue's overtaken purple, brown's coming to lock behind purple. Uh, yellow was the winner, followed by blue, then purple, then we've got green, and finally coming along we've got red. And red's done, but you might notice there's actually another competitor. Yeah, look over here on the left, pink. <laughs> Terrible, terrible performance. Pink barely moved past the start line. So we're just going to skip the rest of the race because pink would take 50 years to get to the end. But here are our standings for the 100 meter dash. So you see here that yellow won with a total time of 1615. Those are actually clock cycles in the CPU, not that it matters. Yeah, but you can see that uh, yellow got first, followed by blue. Blue's total time there was 1759. Uh, followed by, what's that, purple with 1884, etc, 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 all the way down to pink. And you can see here that pink's time was absolutely woeful. Pink, shame on you. <laughs> which algorithm is pink? I don't know. Which algorithm is yellow? Wow, good stuff. The 100 meter dash, interesting stuff. Okay, here is the second track, quite a bit longer. So this first corner just here corresponds to sorting a list of 60 elements. And then we've got, I think, 70 elements, then 80 elements, 90 elements. Yeah, such that by the time we get to the very end, um, this little, this last little leg just here from 19 to 20, the algorithms actually had to sort a list of 250 elements. Okay, so quite a bit larger than the first race, which was two elements to 11. How will the algorithms perform? Um, so place your bets. You can change your color if you like, race to race. I think that's only fair since the first race was quite random. 
But uh, place your bets. Who do you think is going to win? Which colour? So... Okay, here are all the competitors down at the start line. They're all ready to race and on your marks. Get set. And go. All right, blue's off to an early start, followed by brown, followed by green. Pink is doing surprisingly well, just overtaken red and yellow. Uh, looks like blue is the clear winner. Purple's really trailing behind. Uh, pink doing quite well. Who's going to get second place? It looks like a tussle between green and brown. They're very close, but I tell you what, up behind them is coming pink. Here comes pink really fast. Can pink overtake? Can pink overtake? Yes. Well. <laughs> Amazing! What an upset! Okay, so we still got to wait for these other competitors, but that was a very interesting ending there. So, for almost the whole race, second place was a tussle between green and brown, but then, at the very end, on like the last two or three legs, uh, pink flew past them. Amazing! Quite an upset! Interesting part of that race. So, blue there, the clear winner, followed by pink followed by brown or green i can't remember which and then yellow red uh purple i think yeah so here comes red now just coming around the start just coming around the line so slow in comparison yeah what would that be like 10 times slower than blue so blue really um really good uh, really good job there flew past everybody from pretty much the start I think from about the first three corners. And Red's finally finished. Coming sixth place or second last. Well done, Red. You must be proud of yourself with that effort. <laughs> and Purple, I don't even know. Should we wait? Should we wait and watch? <laughs> it's so slow. Wow. Hurry up, Purple. Be like the whole stadium's just sitting there going like hurry up <laughs> half of the people have left what people um purple coming along here to take seventh place congratulations purple that was terrible mate <laughs> okay and the second race is done interesting stuff so the big upset there if we just watch the start of the race again watch how pink overtakes um yellow and red and uh Brown and green just having a bit of a tussle. Blue just clearly in front by a million miles. Yeah. But it's interesting how pink comes up from behind to take second place. Let's have a look who actually got second. So pink shoots past them both and brown gets second. Okay, so... Okay, so the final standings for that race, this is quite a long list just here, but we can see here that blue got first place with 248. Now, you'll notice that these times are all scaled down. That's just because I want to avoid putting, you know, too many digits on the screen. So this is something like, um, I think it's something like 100 times longer than the first race. Now, I've scaled everything down just so that it fits on the screen a little bit better. But blue was first with a time of 248, absolutely flying. Who got second place was uh, pink with a time of 328. So it's interesting here if you have a bit of a look at these uh, have a bit of a look at these times. So pink actually started out vastly slow up than uh, green and brown. Yeah, but uh, brown got third place with a time of 335 and green got fourth place with 339. So the big loser there, purple, terrible, terrible effort. Purple, what are you doing? 1605. Wow. <laughs> it's slow. Okay, so moving on to the final race. This is the big one, people. This is the big one. Sorting lists from 100,000 elements all the way up to 200,000 elements. These are substantial lists of data, I will say. Uh, as far as desktop computers go, you generally don't get your desktop computer to sort lists that large, but We've done it today, <laughs> just for our amusement. All right, so here's the start line up here. And the first corner will be reached in a time duration that um, corresponds to how long the 100,000 element lists were sorted. Uh, 110,000, 120,000, 130,000, 40,000, 50,000, all the way up to 200,000, which is this final leg just here. So the first two races might give you some inkling that there's something quite strange about some of these algorithms. Um, purple included and uh, the strange thing would be that purple is slow no the strange thing is not that um, something strange about some of these algorithms but who is gonna win is the big question who is gonna win
Okay, so here is the final race. Is everybody ready? On your marks, get set, and go. All right, red and yellow after a flying start. Purple coming along for third. Red wins. Yellow can't wait a minute. Something's happened there. Something strange has happened there, people. Four of the races were so fast. They were so fast that it looked like they just teleported to the finish. Yeah. Let's just watch that again and we'll see exactly what happened. Okay, so here's the start of the race. As soon as they go, bang. Yeah, four of the competitors just jumped straight to the finish line. So they actually did the whole lap. What we've got to do is slow the race down by 1,000 times, just so that we can get a bit of an idea of who out of these four fast algorithms, who actually uh, was the fastest. So let's slow the race down 1,000 times and watch it again. Uh, the races that we just saw, red, yellow, and purple, they're actually the slowest. Yeah. Okay, so here we go. We're going to run this again at 1,000th of the speed of before and we'll see if we can detect who was the actual winner out of those four fast races is everybody ready for the ultra slow motion uh, replay here we go and they're off and racing people there is no competition look at this pink racer man from such a woeful start in the first race to absolutely annihilating everyone pink is bored pink is looking around to see where the other races are <laughs> And Pink's off again, deciding to lap everybody. Oh no, laps them once. Green's coming along for second place. A little bit of a tussle there between green and blue, but not much. Pink coming around to lap them all again. Pink's going around to lap them again. Can he lap them again? It's going to happen. There you go. Okay, and green second place. Blue third place. And finally, coming along here for fourth place is brown. Uh, so pretty interesting stuff, really. Who is this mysterious pink competitor that failed completely to even finish the first race? And yet when we get larger lists, absolutely annihilates the entire field. Wow. <laughs> okay, you might notice also that our other races up there in the corner, this is your red, your yellow, and your purple. They don't even look like they've moved. That's just because we're playing this back at such a slow speed that maybe they've moved a pixel or so, but not enough to even notice. Okay, so that pretty much wraps it up. Now, the big question is, who was who? Okay, so let's have a bit of a look at the final race there to see the sorts of times that we're looking at. Pink, come along for the win with 82. Now, remember that this is thousands and thousands of times. Um, uh, it's scaled down so that it kind of is readable. Uh, otherwise, it'll look something like purple just here. What's that? 1,086,865. Uh, second was green, third was blue with a time of 382, then we've got fourth which is brown, 683, and then we've got these uh, slower competitors. Fifth was red, sixth was yellow, and seventh was purple. Okay, interesting stuff. Okay, here we go, drum roll, the big reveal. The competitors are as follows. Okay, so we have three different sections. We've got quadratic sorts, comparison sorts, and linear. Um, so the quadratic sorts were the three slowest competitors in that final race. Red was the selection sort, yellow was the insertion sort, and purple was the humble bubble sort. <laughs> oh, purple. Okay, the time there for a quadratic sort is something like n squared, or proportional to n squared. So the, uh, the next group of competitors, really quite fast, uh, up until we start to get massive amounts of data, this is the comparison sorts. So green was the quick sort, Blue was the STD sort or STL sort. Brown was the shell sort. And comparison sorts all use the comparison operators and they have a maximum speed. Now this is just on average of n log n. Okay, so much better than n squared. But finally, the big winner in that final race and maybe the most confusing of them all, the pink competitor. That was the radix sort, the single fastest sort on earth. <laughs> it's linear time, people. Big O N. Yeah, so the radix sort absolutely annihilated everybody. Okay, so we can have a bit of a look at the results here by algorithm now, now that we know what colors belong to what. So in the small list, what you'll see is that the competitors all performed fairly well. I mean, quick sort was a little slow, selection sort a little slow too, but. 
Raid Exhort performed terribly. Absolutely terribly. So why did this pink competitor perform so badly in that first uh, first little race? Well, the reason is because Raid Exhort has a lot of overheads. So it's actually got to allocate enough data to copy um, all of your elements into little buckets. Uh, it's actually an extension of the bucket sort. And so it requires a lot of overheads, allocating RAM, uh, copying your elements all over the place. Those overheads are what causes the Radix sort to perform so badly when the lists are small. Uh, as you can see here, it's just crazy slow, really. Um, so those times there for the middle uh, is wrong. That's not correct. Yeah, but we'll move on to the large race. So, so the largest race, as the size of your lists that you're sorting gets larger and larger, the overheads to the Radix sorts sort of tend not to matter anymore. Such that by the time you get millions and millions of elements, there really is no choice. Um, you want to sort with the Radix sort because it's linear. So this is the conclusion of all of that little adventure. So for small lists, just about any algorithm will do, but what you want to do really is avoid overheads. So it was actually insertion sort, the yellow competitor that uh, won the first race. And pretty much the reason why it did is because it's super simple. It has no overheads pretty much at all. Um, so yeah, it's quite quick. Even something like Humble Little Bubble Saw actually did really, really well in that first race. And if you think about it, that kind of makes sense. I mean, we're taught in computer science that Bubble Sort is hopeless, but uh, if your list is small, Bubble Sort's actually quite practical. Uh, even down to the fact, if you think about something like um, a two element list, uh, Bubble Sort's gonna do it like that. I mean, it's really, really fast. I'm just gonna check them both and switch them if it has to. So the comparison sorts are really, really good for medium-sized lists, lists with elements of, say, 60, all the way up to maybe a 1,000 or so. Uh, but if you've got tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands, if you've got millions of elements, people, there is no competition. Uh, there's only one king. It's the linear Radix sort, the fastest sorting algorithm in the world. <laughs> Uh, so the source code was actually adapted from various free places on the internet and I'll leave links down below where you can get the original of the source codes. Uh, but I'll also put my source code up along with the little driver program uh, for the Patreons. Yeah, so I did change a few things um, for some of the algorithms. Uh, other than that, uh, I mean, I hope that was fun and interesting. I hope we all learned something. I know I did. Yeah, I learned that uh, Radix Sort is hopeless at sorting two element lists. Uh, I learned that Bubble Sort is really slow at sorting 200,000 elements. <laughs> anyway, thank you very much for watching. Have a good one.